here at yeah, here at the one, Pure Fab V Emporium. This one was in a little bit of a fender bender. This looks uh, Just all a too familiar. Bit. Just a little bit. Yep. Pretty much gonna do the same thing to Joey's car, or to this car that we did to Joey's. Get the frame straightened out, cut it all right in front of the front mount point of the subframe, tube the rest of the front. When we got it back from Darren's, the subframe wouldn't bolt in all the way because the front right mount down here was shifted back a quarter inch. So in turn, basically needed to go ahead and cut off the frame horns in the front and pretty much make my own. and got the bung that was inside of the factory frame. Uh, cut out all the spot welds in it and made boxes around it. Secured it back to the frame. Put another piece of plate on the side of the frame to basically reinforce it. That way it's not just butt welded. So what ended up happening was I cut the back side of the frame and plated it and built the structure Plate to the back side, plate to the front side, and it's got the weld bung on the inside, still spot welded like factory. From there, just started doing the front tubular work. Made a plate for the hood latch. Basically your upper panel is broke right there because your bumper sits on top of that. And the bottom section of the sheet metal of the bumper sits on this section right here. So you actually got two supports that hold it. I've got a jig that I made down there on the floor off our radiator supports, off of our jig car here. And figured out where the hood latch needs to be. So once I put the jig back on, get the hood latch support where it needs to be and basically build the brackets from my latch support bracket to the regular two front. I'm a, I'm a fancy jig, makes it look like a diesel truck. <laughs> Like that. He's one of our in-house front cross members. Why is there so many wheels? More power, baby. More power. More power. <laughs> Game <laughs> it's the wrong car. Ah, I'm making it for this car. No, you're supposed to be making it for that car. I'm making it for this car. Yeah, but that's not even a car. Bend to make sure it was the same. 
where I wanted to land. And, uh, you do a couple bends over and over again, it kind of tends to go a couple degrees, or not even a couple degrees, maybe a half degree or whatever, sometimes more. So I had to match this up, that's why I'm like, mm, we're good. So we're doing this here two front on the car and I made this bar that goes around the headlight. And now I'm at the point to where I gotta make it for that side. I've got it all nice, fit it up where I want it on this side. Just take a little bit and get all my notches where I needed them to be. Nice and clean and tight. So now the hard part is making it for that side. So little tech tip for you fab guys out there and whoever's watching so obviously this is kind of an odd bend you know it's on an angle and it's also rotated to the side and coming off this little cope right here you know it's not flat and straight so I gotta make this mirrored on that side so let's show you how to do it now we're gonna Step back to my pipe fitting days for a while. So here's one side. Oh, the opposite I've already done. That's mirrored on one side. So where do you start? So a big starting point would be finding the center of the tube, pipe, whatever you're working with. So in order to do that, an easy way to do it. Set the tube on a flat piece or a flat table. Take a square and scribe a line. Keep your square flat. Keep your tube flat. Scribe a line. So that in turn, I've already got a mark on that side. So let's go ahead and do it on the other side. So basically, what this does is when this sits flat, your tube sits flat. As soon as you contact the tube. That's going to be your center point. So, drive a line. You kind of see a faint line right in the center of the tube, and that'll show you that this tube is either rotated one side, the other, whatever the case is. In order to see it better, take the sharpie. Straight ahead down the tube. Sometimes you gotta get out of the light to be able to see it. But now you can scribe your line straight down the tube. And that's your center point of your tube and your starting point that you can start with. So now, basically, what you can do is find where the tube starts and stops are. So there's one on one side. There's one on the other side. So now, that's set up for ready for after I make what I'm going to on this. So, like I said, you find your start and stop points on a tube that you're trying to duplicate. Mark that. Basically, what I'm going to do is make a wraparound. I don't know if some people have heard of wraparound. Some people will probably know the trick before, who knows. But what I'm basically gonna do is start off with a sheet of paper or cardboard or whatever you wanna use that'll wrap around the tube. It's fairly easy. Just kinda bring that. You want the paper past once your coat. And sometimes it might be easier to put a little tape on. Now, what you want to do is you can, the best way to do it is make sure your piece of paper is pretty straight. 
That way it's not caught on one side or the other. You know, if you wanted to, you can trim it around, or whatever the case is, it's easier to start with it. Paper flat all the way around, tape it on one side, and wrap your piece of paper around. Now, when you wrap a piece of paper around, you want to make sure both edges of the paper meet each other and form pretty good, just like that. You don't want it overlapping or overlapping one way or the other because that's how you line it up to transfer this piece of paper onto another tube. Basically, line this up, get your paper wrapped around nice and tight. Put it wrapped around just enough. And what you can do instead of having a bunch of excess, take a razor blade, scissors, whatever the case is, cut that excess off. Lay another piece of tape on there. But it's nice, wrapped around, flat. It's nice, wrapped around, flush, all the way around. So now, you can take kind of Work your fingers around the tube. It kind of puts a little dirty indention mark of where the sharp point of the tube is. You can cut it on the tube, or you can take the piece of paper off and cut the line out that's on the tube. So I'm gonna cut it on the tube, that way I know I got every little bit as close as I can. Sharp razor blade helps pretty good. Take it right there on that edge. So that. So now, back to where our center point of the tube came in handy. This is our center point. Like I said, you can do it either way you want to. You could have took the piece of paper off and cut the cope out. But before you do that, you would want to scribe this line right there on the paper. That way when you take this piece of paper off, transfer it to that tube, you know where your line is that you're gonna line up back on this tube. So now before you take the paper off, you need to measure from your start of your bin to where the paper starts. Go ahead and cut an inch because you don't want to mess with the end. Cut an inch on there and you got five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. Boom. That's your temple. Now, since it's getting transferred to this tube, put that there aside for a second. I've got my center mark of where my tube is. I need to measure five and three quarters from that bend point out on the tube. So now, since you're mirroring it from one side to the other, you can't just wrap it around the tube where we marked our center point with five and three quarters. You have to take that and put it on the inside to mirror it from the other side. I'll flip the paper around, numbers, letters, whatever you want to use on the inside. Line your center point up on the paper, that's where we marked right there. Line that up with center point on the tube, along with the bottom of the paper. Is that that five and three quarters from that bin? Do your wrap. So now when we're doing this part, again we gotta make sure when we wrap it around that paper meets up exactly flush all the way around on that bottom side. Boom, just like that. So now what we're gonna do is just mark it out. So after you cut that, you get a mirrored image of the other piece too. Bam.
Today, I built the bracket for the upper side of the fender and the bumper brackets themselves for the headlight. So it's pretty stiff, it's not going anywhere. I'm waiting for that side to cool down. We'll throw the bumper back on. And then from there, basically making cooler mounts. He's got the uh, ZL1 heat exchanger. So I gotta fab those mounts and make the upper mounts back for the radiator condenser and all that. So getting down to the nitty gritty, it's getting closer. We're gonna take the subframe out and get it powder coated. But other than that, that's about it. Got some welding to do, some brackets to make, more brackets to make, more brackets to make, and then we're done. That's pretty much what we got. Come on, give me a hand on this one. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah, dude. Look at that. Look at that. 